Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ancient Missouri Props and Costumes. I'm Donald Barker and today we're at Balaka Falls. What I'd like to uh, present to you today is some of the new Assyrian Hanjare that I've uh, made and with them one of them is going to uh, a friend of a friend for his cousin's wedding. He too is Assyrian uh, and this particular dagger was specially made for him. Uh, Khanjar has a curved blade uh, and the Assyrian ones tended to have silver scabbards with decorations on the hilt. Uh, three, three at the bottom of the hilt, three at the top of the hilt and uh, three across the top of the hilt as well. So I'll give you a look at those and uh, what I was able to accomplish. To give you an idea, here is a Assyrian Khanjar stainless steel blade and I'm uh, trying to give some, some etching a go. I haven't got around to doing the etching but uh, we'll get there. Here you've got a stainless steel blade with a with an ebony hilt. So let's have a look at that Makassar ebony. Uh, Makassar ebony is from Indonesia, and the Gabon ebony is from Africa. But it's uh, it's got a very very beautiful texture. Uh, the, the the grain and the way the the stripes of the grain run run through the timber is something very unique. So ebony handle, stainless steel blade uh, with the scabbard, black scabbard out of, uh, I think this is Kari timber from Western Australia and it's been painted black we'll have uh, decorations or carved decorations on uh, the, the scabbard and then covered in uh, lamb skin which will be stitched at the, at the back so that's that. And this little, this little one here is my grandfather's. Uh, he managed to bring over from back home. However, the decorations I originally took off, they had some, although this one was uh, fallen in the top corner. But you can see across, across the hilt here, across the hilt here, and on top of the hilt also. You can see the, the blade starting to get a bit uh, rusty. Can still be brushed up to, to a clean. But this is a child's dagger. Uh, you could tell by, by the size. Here too, this is a, I think it's walnut in there, don't know if you can see, you can see the, the timber of the scabbard and it's a very very thin uh, lambskin that's been uh, stitched, whip stitched at the, at the back. So because of the condition of, of this, it prompted me to, to want to make uh, one for myself, a uh, little bit bigger obviously for an adult and uh, be able to pass on uh, the tradition of Assyrian Khanjars because we use them for our weddings and uh, our, our traditions as well. Then. Here. Here is the, the one that I've been able to uh, make. This was the first one that I made. Uh, the entire thing, the handle painted black, was a Kari timber. And so is the timber of the scabbard. We've got lambskin. It's been uh, whip stitched. You see the stitches at the, at the back, just like that. And I found uh, these decorations to, to mount on the hilt again three at the bottom, three at the top, 
and three also on top. Usually the ones on the top come with a with a plate or there's a there's a flat uh, plate which uh, these three decorations are usually a part of. Uh, traditionally they were made out of uh, silver filigree work and so was the the scabbard. And here this is a scabbard you can see the carvings and then when you lay your uh, leather on top of that carving that's on the front of the scabbard uh, it picks up all that all that fine decoration that fine carving that you do by hand and here's a tie string that I've been experimenting with uh, so that when we when we put them on we wear them uh, we we dance a lot dance around a lot uh, so you don't want your scabbard falling down I can see on my grandfather's one uh, due to wear and tear the the tip usually gets uh, damaged first so what tends to happen is the scabbard will split at the bottom and here I've tried to to wrap some cordage that's why they usually have those little knobs on the end or there's a little ball attached to to the tip of the scabbard and that helps if that hits that can be replaced uh, so so here this was my first one so Kari handle timber painted black with these uh, decorations and you've got a mild steel blade uh, of a much bigger size and you can see the Assyrian writing on the uh, start of start of the blade up at the top with an Assyrian flag uh, this particular blade is uh, named toilet Ashur Ashur's revenge in English uh, and here you have my uh, my name, Donald Berjo, and Ashur above the Assyrian flag. So that would be read in uh, this fashion. Okay. So that's that's that. It's got a bit of uh, felt lining inside. So there's a red red felt lining inside the scabbard as well, and that just uh, helps to give a smooth. Uh, a smooth draw and uh, when you want to put back your hanger into its scabbard. And this is the one that I'm that was a special request that I've made for uh, one of my cousin's friends, uh, Shami's first cousin's friend. He asked me if I could make one for him. He saw the first one that I had made and I thought I'd uh, attempt to up my game. So I started with that, that one with the ebony hilt. You can see the blade is a lot more curved than, than this one. Uh, and here we've been able to uh, do his, his writing that was specifically uh, what he wanted in a very similar design to uh, the the very first the very first one so there's two ways I could have I could have written the writing in this manner but the way that you're meant to use the hanger is in is in a nice pick grip with the point uh, going down the curve going down so you use them use them in this fashion going across you can go under under the under the belly like that drag it across you can also go for the outside of of the neck and go straight across and down you're going you're trying to get into areas here here under the armpits into into the join between the shoulder and the neck uh, so so that's why I decided to do the writing so that it lines up with with the way that you would hold it if you were to, to fight with it. You see the handle on this one is bigger. This actually I made to proportion of one that I found in a museum uh, with gold decorations on there on a black, I think it was a horn handle uh, with with a carbon steel blade. I believe that was a, uh, it was woods. The blade looked woods to me and uh, yeah, so what what we've done with his is concerning the writing. So when his 
when he's holding it like this you'll see you'll see the inside edge you've got again the Syrian you've got the let's see yeah the Assyrian flag and you've got his name O'Neill Bet Kinshaw his house and then on the other side you've got uh, Jamane Ashitha that's his clan and the town that he's from uh, which is the same town as mine I'm from a different clan and obviously a different house and different name uh, so here you've got some velvet lining lining the scabbard I figured out why sometimes you see velvet on the top of the scabbard so what's happening is when when you're stitching the lever at the back because you need to fold fold the lever over under itself it's causing uh, two layers on one side two layers on the other right up at the top so what happens is when you marry because well, I made this uh, scabbard here so that it sits flush with the handle but after you're putting on the leather you've got those two bumps at the back where the where the stitching has happened and sometimes you what happens is if you don't put the felt you'll you'll see you'll see the blade shine through uh, which means it hasn't been fully fully closed but that felt allows for that extra leeway to be able to compensate for that one or two mil uh, so that when you put it down it sits and you can't see the blade uh, so this one has been made to specs uh, can, that, that one with the gold decoration and the uh, horn handle this handle is uh, mobile and the scabbard is mobile as well which uh, has been painted black and the scabbard with uh, lamb lambskin black lambskin as well and I've given him uh, some tie cords so that he can tie it so that when he dances uh, the scabbard won't fall through his uh, broad belt and narrow belt unless they're already really tight uh, so there's a few ways that you can you can wear this uh, traditionally sometimes you see them uh, straight down in the center and you also see them curved on on the side so so mounted something something like this but I found that that it could it could also go in this position with the decoration on on the scabbard still at the front and that allows still for a uh, quick draw and a very easy uh, re re-entry to put your dagger away. And here, the you see them with their with their broad belts, the Assyrians in their full traditional clothes, uh, and sometimes you even see them uh, straight. So I would think that you could wear it mounted to to your right hand side, so the handle. You straight up and then mount it to the right hand side next to your right hand so it's easy draw you're already up into an attacking position and then you also have this method where you put it with the point down and that will also give you uh, quick quick draw in a forward thrusting ice pick very happy with the way that it turned out so I upped my game we went from a mild steel blade to uh, stainless stainless steel blade and I also managed to pull off a uh, midrib and the midrib on both sides everything was done by hand so the handle uh, was was filed and shaped all by hand the the blade itself from a flat bar of stainless steel uh, I was able to, to do raised ribs and uh, on both sides and polish it I didn't want a mirror finish polish on the stainless steel so I think that looks a little bit too uh, too much like cutlery I like the little bit matte finish on the on the shine I went up to about 800 on 800 grit on this particular dagger you can see this one because the handle is bigger than my original one even when you hold it all the decorations uh, are showing which is gorgeous 
and I've mounted a silver or a stainless steel plate at the at the back as well. You can see the balance point is about an inch is about an inch from the start of the hilt and I've also pinned I don't know if you can you can see that here you've got one pin here's your other pin this pin goes through the decoration and through the blade and and out the other side so that's the same pin yeah these are stainless steel pins gone through the decoration and uh, through the stainless steel blade inside obviously the timber and then out the other end another uh, feature is I don't know if you can see it but sometimes on the originals you see you see links linking the decorations together so I've got some jump rings and drilled some holes and link these decorations together as well and what that does is should should one fall off you're not going to lose it. It's very hard sometimes to, to rematch uh, your decorations that you have on your hilt. So <clears throat> it's much easier if even if it does come off, it stays on and you've got the jump rings linking them to the other ones. So if it comes off, it's still attached to the rest of uh, your decorations. And then likewise up at the up at the top. Yeah. You can you can see the the jump rings there, the jump rings on that row, and the jump jump rings on that row holding it all together. So, Anil, how ibricha casino ti le biguara, u how it chidia bia bia changer, u hola hola luista. What I also did was I uh, made the display stand uh, for this particular dagger so that he could uh, display it and I'll give you a look at the stand as well All right, so what I have here is uh, the stand that I've made and you can you can see it's uh, relatively uh, simple inspired by the Japanese uh, stands that are for sale and here what I want to do was uh, take that concept and give it a very strong Assyrian flavor uh, so hence the crenellations you can you can see and the two and the two arms I've made look like towers uh, we notice in the Japanese uh, style they tend to they tend to make the the arms look like trees with branches that you would place your uh, swords and daggers onto uh, double stand and I, I like the double stand but what I found was when let's say I put my dagger when it's inside the scabbard uh, down here it looks like something is missing up at the top when you have a two tier so in this case here you can you can see I've done the crenellations and it's in those crenellations up at the top where you can put your uh, blade up at the top and your scabbard sits here uh, so here we go inspired by the Japanese but I think this gives a very uh, respectable way for you to be able to uh, present present your blade at home on your mantle or anywhere else you'd like to put it in your display cabinet uh, it's not it's not big I think it's about uh, what a foot maybe 30 30 centimeters in length from here to here uh, and it's not very tall what have we got maybe 20 20 centimeters in in height so it doesn't take up too much space and if I wanted to just like the traditional Japanese ones I could have done it so that it was only this tower and this tower and the middle piece uh, and you don't even need to worry about about these it would have been even even smaller uh, so these crenellations are meant to represent the ancient Assyrian city of Ninue uh, where we are from and hopefully he he likes the display stand that i've made for him uh, in this style this timber is the same timber that i've used on the hilt i've used on the scabbard it's all mobile uh, stained and uh, lacquered spray lacquered as well so there you go that, that should give you an idea of what that stand looks like
I think it's the first one I've seen with crenellations like this. Uh, so maybe some people from uh, who wanna who wanna make some medieval type stands might might like that uh, crenellation look. But here, if they do see it, they can get an idea of what it would look like. Two towers and the crenellations across uh, the bottom the bottom bar connecting the two towers together. So the way the way it works is if you put it in this position you can you can see how it's meant to it's meant to sit uh, and depending on the angle you're gonna you're gonna see you've got all this uh, to look at. What I also did was I angled it slightly because uh, I'm assuming if it's on a mantelpiece then most people would be looking down at it, at it. Uh, so I wanted it tilted a, a little bit up uh, so it's not fully fully straight straight uh, but you could also put it that way too. Another thing I like about this stand I kind of fluked it didn't realize you could do it but it works is you could also put it in in this fashion so you see what i'm doing you got the crenellations the gap between the crenellations is what's allowing me to have the space to to hang things up uh, so that's another way you could put it but the way that i'd want to display this I, I took again inspiration from the japanese and the way that they put their blades and they have the the curve of their swords going in a downward position which i thought is perfect for an Assyrian Khanjar because that's how we actually use the Khanjar although our Khanjar are uh, double double edged and then you've got the the scabbard just get that which will which will sit in here like that and you can you can display uh, both of them in this in this fashion So that's what the, the hanger, yeah, maybe if I stand behind it, you could probably see the stand a little bit more. Uh, so that's when it's on full, full display. You can uh, read the writing. On this side is Jamanid Ashitha, and on the other side is his name, Onel Betkinsho and his house. Uh, so it's a... Uh, I think it's a much better improvement compared to the very first one I made. Um, we we can finally see those uh, the carving on the scabbard just pop because uh, I was able to, to to get much more depth on uh, the carving of this scabbard than I could on my on my very first one. Uh, plus the stand, I think this would make a lovely lovely gift. And again, Onel, I think. Uh, I hope you're you're proud of your your fellow Assyrians' work, and may it bring uh, good tidings and blessings to you and your family. Another thing you could do is if you leave it in its scabbard and you're at your wedding, you can you can still dance with it. 
when it's actually on your person uh, you're dancing around with the yalakhba you can also hang that off the the handle I've also seen in uh, the old antique photos of uh, our people if they got uh, rosary beads or if you've got tobzieh uh, you'll wrap them around your handle so that they're uh, easy easy for you to get to whenever whenever you're sitting around go dewan pawale ban tobzieh easy access so another thing you can also leave it in scabbard and have and have it in your hand like this um, so you can see the the difference the range in the sizes that they had from back then yeah here is my grandpa's one that he passed on to me you can see the difference in the in the size uh, and this is uh, a kid's one and here is a adult adult fully fully grown version 